Welcome back to the Flow Track Podcast. I'm Kevin. He's Lincoln. Happy Friday, everyone. Flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com is our email address. Lincoln, World Half Marathon Championships this weekend. Have you ever been as excited for a World Half Marathon Championships in your life? Definitely not. I do think 2016 when Mo Farah ran, I think that was 2016 or was that 2018? One of those two, one of those years was pretty exciting. But this year when there's been basically uh, nothing between some time trials and a few one-off Diamond Leagues, I am uh, real excited about my trip to Gdynia, which I haven't even planned yet, uh, but I'm going to get out there <laughs> somehow. Gordon going to Stillwater. Yeah. You going to Poland. We have it all covered this weekend. Virtual coverage for Lincoln. Just like there's virtual races, we're doing virtual yeah. coverage <laughs> now. Was that the year? Was the Farah year the year that Cam Moore fell at the start and then ended up splitting a 1301 or something? Am I remembering that right? I feel like we're getting some things mixed up. Uh, 16 was definitely the year he fell. Okay. And so, so we, we, we obviously we would need to have these facts a little straighter if Cam Warwar was running, but uh, literally he got hit by a car, so he is not running. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I because he won three in a row, I get it a little bit confused. I feel like he did the thirteen oh one in eighteen. I know the fall was in sixteen. Um, fall I feel was in like 16, my, I just confirmed. Yeah, yeah, uh, and then I, so I, I also th I think. Mo Farah was in 16 as well and got third. Uh, in in any case, neither of those men are going to be in Poland this weekend. So uh, <laughs> there's been some some exciting moments in the world half in recent years, though. That that's I guess the bigger point. Okay, I have fact checked this, and this does hold up. 2018 was when he ran a 13:01 between yeah. 15 and 20 kilometers. It's good to dive into the history before we right. go into the 2020 version that's the reason mm -hmm. i i bring it up but we have good fields on the men's and women's sides here i'm looking at it through the prism of of chepta guy making his half marathon debut this is a bold debut this is a tough field to debut right. against lincoln you have a lot of you have a lot of the world's best in this event and he's just jumping right in and he's, I would have to say, the massive favorite. Um, anytime you break the 5,000 and 10,000 world records in your last two races, that will do that for you, considering he's also pretty good at cross country. I don't think there's a lot of people that are uh, thinking the 13.1 mile distance is going to be too much of a task for him. I think it's a situation where we look at it and say, we maybe need to keep an eye on that 58 uh, I always forget it. 58-0 world record. It, just because that's how good Chep the guy has been. He has three for three with four world records. Now I do doubt that he actually does that, but it's something mm -hmm. to keep an eye on. Just because Chep the guy is a man on fire right now. Uh, he's been the best distance runner in the world for the last year plus, and uh, 26 11 his last race i think he's the favorite uh there will be some guys that make him work but you know you look at we'll get into it but you know another favorite jacob kiplimo his 19 year old countryman doesn't have much experience in the half either so mm -hmm. when you take out cam war war i mean th this would have been awesome if obviously if cam war war was here because i think you definitely have like you'd have the one guy is the best half marathon runner in the world, and then one guy is the best track runner in the world. Let's see what they can do to, uh, when they come together. We don't have that. I think it's pretty clear that Chepta guy is the massive favorite, despite this being his first time at the distance. I'm going to quibble a bit with the use of the word massive there, since it is his debut, and since he is running against guys with personal bests in the 58 minute range he's having to go double yeah. the distance again 10k people usually translate well to the half marathon it's not like asking him to go all the way up to to the marathon but this would be a an impressive feat in a year where every single race he's run has been barrier breaking in one way shape or form and i like that he's doing this because there's really nothing else for him this year He's already run the 5K world record. He's already run the 10K record. His argument only gets stronger right now 
with the increase in range and showing that he can dominate outside those two disciplines next year. Yeah. He can obviously add to his argument by winning two Olympic gold medals. But right now he he's chosen the most ambitious goals, the most ambitious racing opportunities this year and, and targeted those and gone after those. And mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty great that the, the best runner in the world is going to make a debut in a distance at this level. So I don't know. I don't know if he's a massive favorite. I, ju I just don't know how those other six miles, six plus miles are going to go for him. He's obviously been training for the five and 10 specifically, because I hate to think you run that fast without doing specific training for the yeah. five and 10. There's of course some carryover, but contrast that with gentlemen like uh, Kibiwat Candy, who's a devilishly fast half marathon or 58, 38, and has run the race a bunch of times, uh, won the RAK half in February. Uh, Abraham Cherubon of Bahrain, you know, yeah. Guye Adola. Yeah, it's, there's, there's a lot of, and there'll probably be some random person up there as well that's able to to push the envelope here to, to really challenge Chapter Guy. So I think he's the favorite, but if it was Chapter Guy versus the field, I think it would be close to 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 it'd be like about a 60-40 split. Maybe 55-45. Okay. Oh, I'm way more bullish on his chances. And I would argue no one save maybe a couple guys, maybe Kibiwat Candy, just because his name is fantastic. And maybe oh he goodness. just has found has just found his calling in the half marathon. But I would argue that no one trains specifically for the half marathon because Jeffrey Campbell other than this. Cam Warrer, okay. He still runs and the marathon. So. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just an event that outside of this race doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, as we know, it's not – we've we've basically proven it's not an accurate predictor of what you can do in the full marathon. Um, so that being the case, I, I just way more – I'm way more, like I said, bullish on Cheptegei. When we talk about – there's no one on this – planet that has this this resume right now i guess i guess Michaela, true active <laughs> people he's he's fantastic on the roads we saw that when he ran 1251 i do think there's something to that I, I think any inexperience on the roads we can kind of throw that out because he's run fast over 10,000 on the roads he's or 10k on the roads he's run fast over 5k it's not like he hasn't run this disc it's not like the, it's not a marathon he's not going to be this isn't the furthest he's ever run. It's not a situation mm -hmm. like that where we're like legitimately worried about how he's going to fare over this distance. I bet you he's run 13 miles in his life. I'm just going to make that that assessment and make that guess. Uh, I, I I just don't think there's even even in the case of Candy. How many times we've seen people run 58 minutes, and what does it mean mm -hmm. when it comes to a big scale? It doesn't always bear out that they're all of a sudden this dominant force in the half. I, I just think he's way, way, way better. And I know this has been the week of Lincoln talking about the IAAF scoring tables. And I'm going to do it one more time for all the fans of the scoring tables back home. 26-11 uh, equates to a 57-21 half marathon. Uh, if he just runs a minute, within a minute of that, he's going to win. So I agree with you that there. I do agree with you there. there. That if if he's but, if he's just anywhere on on the same level anywhere in the same ballpark of his of his track exploits he's going to dominate. They don't give out medals for scoring table performances. Oh, so. they don't. I oh, I thought nope. they did. I I looked that up right when we were looking up the 2016 oh, 2018 okay. World Half Marathon okay. Championships. <laughs> I am able to confirm. I just have a little bit of unease. There's a little bit of uncertainty to somebody who's running double the distance racing the d double the distance for the first time. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is why I'm not ready to give him the gold yet. It'd be one thing if his debut half marathon was the San Diego rock and roll half marathon. It's not. It's the world half marathon championships mm -hmm. with the candy man himself, with Adola, with his teammate Kip Limo, with Cherubon. He's going to have to run. I don't think he's going to have to run 58 min 58 low to win necessarily, but he's going to have to be really sharp to get this done. And he's had a very successful season so far, but he's also been, I, I don't know. I, I, 
don't know if only two track races can wear you out, but if they can, it's back-to-back world records in the 5 and 10K. If ever there was a time to be worn yeah. out by two races, that's that's the time to do it. What do you see uh, what what do you see his strategy being here? The course is four laps each lap, 5440 meters. Yeah. So it's going to run like a very, very big track race off the on the coast of, of Poland. What do I think his strategy is going to be? I think it does depend on the weather. I've gone deep on this. I've looked into the weather. Might be a little rain. Yeah, what do we got? Uh, uh, it's going to be. It's going to be in. I think in the upper forties or low fifties. The rain is expected early earlier in the day, and it's supposed to stop. I believe right before the women's race at eleven local time, and then should be cleared out by the. By the men's race, but you know, weather, it's unpredictable. Maybe it rains during this and that could impact the race. I think it'd be obviously much, much slower and more tactical if it rains. Um, I don't think it's going to be a situation clearly where Chep the guy just says, see, I'm running 58 minute pace the whole way. Um, maybe Uganda sends out a sacrificial lamb to serve as a pacer. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Um, you know, the thing with him, he obviously has the most speed. So if, if it's, tactical esque and it's 59 20 pace if it's i think he's going to be okay with that i do think his inexperience w- despite the fact that i think he could win an all-out race too like i said if it's mm-hmm. a fit he could run a 58 20 and that is his his fitness indicates as much um i i think given the fact that he may be a little fatigued from his from his races and given the fact that oh by the way i can run four flat at the end i mean i've i've run 12 35 i clearly have the most speed i think he's gonna say why don't we just save this for the last 5k and i'll just blow everybody up (laughs) so his strategy is going to be i think a wait and see game uh um maybe like i said maybe you gone to send somebody else out there not keep limo but somebody of lesser abilities to kind of make sure that you got to have some team control i i don't know but my my biggest thing would be he's gonna kind of let other people dictate do you think the fact that there'll be 5,440 meters of Christmas lights lining this course, <laughs> will that be an unfair advantage for, for chapter guy? Cause he has light experience. Ah, oh, wait, wait, is that, a, is that serious? Is there actually lights? Not, I know no, not. Wait, I, lights, but okay. Oh, okay. Christmas lights. I was just a little early. Maybe Poland gets on their celebrations a little early. I didn't know. Um, yeah, well, you know, will, is he going to like secure from the the Polish version of Walmart like a long series of lights, and maybe they can they can like uh, they'll they'll push back and forth and turn. No, I, I mm-hmm. the lighting. Uh, we you know we get to find out. People like me who say the lights were a big big factor. What we get to find out mm-hmm. is Joshua Chep, the guy. Is he good without lights? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out. No, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Is he light dependent, he Lincoln? Yeah, he's light Your dependent. take, go. Yeah. Um, I mean, there. it's obviously a road race. There's going to be shoe controversies coming uh, out of this. I, I'm not worried about that, like I've said in the past. He's uh, he's he's too good. Obviously, he's won the cross-country world title. A lot of technology going on there in the uh, in the Nordic, wherever the – I forget where cross-country was. Denmark. 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 Our hoose, uh, whose house? Our hoose. Um, so, <laughs> do you? Is so there a bigger Kibiwat? Is there a bigger Kibiwat candy fan in the world right now than Mondo Duplantis? Oh yeah, he's 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 really really hoping for like a sound defeat to secure that athlete of the year trophy. Um, I do think. Uh, no, no, there's not. Maybe Kibiwat candy himself. Maybe. Uh, I don't know, maybe M&M's, maybe the Mars Corporation, really looking to uh, sponsor a long-distance runner from Kenya. <laughs> I will be fast. We've we've seen guys on this level before that are half marathon specialists. Uh, you know, we had uh, a fellow named Abraham Kiptum who popped up out of nowhere. Well, he got busted. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to Keep It White Candy, but we've seen these flash in the pan guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, he's a little bit more than that, but I also am not just going to freak out because he ran 58, 38. There's superstars in the half that, that show up. And then when, when, when a uh, time, when push comes to shove, you realize, oh, it turns out the guy who has won gold medals and who's a world record holder is actually way, way better. I will be surprised if he 
is a legitimate threat to to Chep the guy. Yes, I know he ran fast in Prague, uh, in Prague, I should say. Prague, is that the Missouri pronunciation? Yeah, Prague. Prague sorry. Uh, I know he ran fast in that race, but I and, and beat people by a lot. But I, I I tend to think that's was more dependent on like maybe he had. I, I don't know this, but you know he may have had an advantage in in training that other athletes didn't have. Coming off a pandemic, it's a little uh, a little hard yeah. to know how that translates. It's obviously a good sign for him, but I still, I just because he's run a bunch of half marathons, I don't look at him as like, oh, he's a Chepta guy challenger. I just I just don't legitimately think that. I just don't think these guys are on the same level. It's not a very sticky event. You're right, in part because if you're good at that event. It doesn't really mean anything. You have to go prove that you're better, just as good, or better at a marathon or down right. to 10k. So people just it's don't hard to track blow it. up in the half marathon. They don't. It's not a. It's not a thing. What's that? What's the term marathoners use when they're like, you don't, you don't have to take gels. You don't have to take any nutrition. You just. It's not. It's not a distance that fools a lot of people. Uh, mm-hmm. Zersene Tedeste made a career of just crushing it, and then when he went moved to the marathon, he was. The difference between you're saying playoff the half marathon is the easiest event is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, Zersene Tedesse was playoff Z in the half marathon, and then <laughs> playoff non Z, and when it came to, came to the marathon, you can you can you can move up to the half with with a little uh, impediment to to your abilities, and and that I, I just don't worry about Chep. The debut debut factor doesn't concern me at all. He's better than Kibawat Candy. I just know it for a fact. I I. I I, I, I just, but I here's know. the thing, though. You you used the words Jeffy Camor earlier in the episode, and if he was here, it would be a different story. It would be. It would be. And yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But it's not like Jeffrey Camor. I mean, Jeffrey Camor has won a whole bunch in a row, and mm-hmm. he's clearly the most famous half marathoner right now. Mm-hmm. But I don't. I mean, he wasn't minutes better than these guys. And all of them are capable of having yeah. a good race. I, I just think I think if Chep guy was susceptible to being beat by Cam Moore, he could also be beat by one of these gentlemen in this race. Yeah, because of the reasons um, you mentioned, it's it's you can have that one-off performance. Hmm. Um. Yes, I just think Candy. If you look at his record, it's not like he's been. Yes, he's thirty-seven seconds within. Cam Moore's world record, but previously he just wasn't like a dominant force. I would say, you know, Cam Moore has been a dominant force just because his PRs, I guess you could, in quotes, only 37 seconds faster. Cam Moore was just won three of these titles in a row, has won the New York City Marathon, has medaled on the track. He's a completely different athlete than Kibiwat Candy. I, 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 I know you know that, but there, there is something to be well, said about experience on the top level. It's different than running fast in Prague. I, I, I totally understand that. All I'm saying is we could get into a situation where there's a whole bunch of people left in the mix, like the London mm-hmm. Marathon for the men, it, in that final lap, and they're all going around 59-minute pace. And yes. I, th- I think one of these guys can have a, a good enough day. Chepta guy can be a little bit worse than he was in the 5 and the 10 because that would be natural. He could be a little bit more tired. And it's not playing to his absolute strength. He's not as comfortable with the event. And all those little things add up to a a close race and perhaps an upset. But yeah, I see your point. Uh, I see your point. There are women's other, side of things. And, oh, we're gonna move on. I was just gonna say we I, I always do this and then like an upset happens and it turns out in like a preview, either written or a podcast, like we don't even mention or I don't even mention the the eventual winner. So I just want to at least read some other names. I know you said them. Abraham Cherubin, mm-hmm. formerly of Kenya, now of Bahrain. Uh, he was a silver medalist. He's the old top returner. It's a big, <laughs> big, big honor here. Uh, he has not raced in about a year. I looked that up. Guy Adola uh, of Ethiopia famously challenged Elliot Kipchoge back in 2017. He has not broken 60 minutes in three years. Uh, and Malak, I, I hope that's right. Bela Hugh, uh, he did beat. Mm. Kibi White Candy in 2019, and he was fifth in the world champs 10,000 meters in 2019. The guy who won that race, Joshua Chep, the guy. Uh, so those are a couple other guys that have a possibility of, and then obviously Kip Limo, although I 
don't think Kiplimo is going to beat his uh, his fellow Uganda because I don't think he's ever beat him. So except for maybe, well, did he beat him at the 2017 World Cross Country Championships? I don't know. Everyone beat Chep the guy there. But yeah, yeah. regardless, regardless, it's, <coughs> I'm picking Chep the guy. I just want to mention some other guys just in case they, they, they're listening. They're like, they get that fire. They're like, the Flow Track podcast didn't even mention me. Well, I mentioned some guys. So there you go. Well, why don't you mention the rest of Kenya's team too? Because whoever they're sending, I think, has a chance to win, right? By virtue of the fact that they made Kenya's team. Hmm. Okay. Well, let me let me do this real quick. Hold on, I got to pull up the. Well, I can. Can you? I got him. I got him right here. We got. Well, just in terms of who, who's entered, I don't know if they're gonna oh. do some late switches. Or we got some alternates, but Leonard Barsatone, Morris yeah. Gachaga, the aforementioned mm-hmm. Candyman, Bernard mm-hmm. Camelli. And Bernard Geno. Um, wow, two Bernards. That's just know. unfair. Um, well, one's I mean, all, Bernard all, and one's Bernard. The slowest, the slowest PB is fifty nine twenty two. Yeah. Again, I've just I've learned throughout my years to not fall in love with with personal best when it comes to the half marathon. I'm not saying you need to fall in love, but for yeah. a for a one race for a one race fling, perhaps mm-hmm. it could work. Yeah. And that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all this is. This is this is one race. <laughs> oh, it's Ethiopia. not a seven seven race series. I thought this was a seven. I thought this was baseball. I thought it was seven race series. I'm just kidding. Uh, um, you got Ethiopia has also got Leo Gebrselassie at fifty nine eighteen. Yeah, you mentioned Andabalak Belahu, who could forget at fifty nine ten. I mean, also Burhanu like guess fifty nine twenty and Amenda Wark Walligan. Sorry to their family for messing up their name. Uh, fifty-nine twenty-two. PB. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're going to see a lot of fifth, low fifty-nine guys from the East African countries. So, uh, I just I think we've listed the guys who are at least we've highlighted the guys who are at least preventing Chep the guy from sleeping ten hours the night before. I think you know maybe he'll sleep only nine hours and forty five minutes. He's still gonna get a restful sleep so he's not staying up all night. But maybe some of these guys he's thinking of the, the candyman. Yeah. And of course you can't forget his name. No, you can't forget the candyman. Of course people tune in though for the team implications with the world half. <laughs> You're allowed to <laughs> come on man, I'm trying to be serious here. Yeah. You uh you can start five you score three, and it's aggregate times, not on okay. places. So it's aggregate times. In America, we do things on places like cross country. Yeah. So, who who do you got in the mm-hmm. team race? Um. Wow. Let me. I was just looking at. You know, it is going to. I mean, Uganda's really got a chance for the upset. Obviously, if Cheptegei and Kiplimo deliver, they've got a real, real good shot. Kiplimo's had a pretty good year on the track as well, 726, 1248. Uganda has a 60-flat guy who has run 60-flat. So I, I like Uganda, and I think mm-hmm. next in line would, would be Kenya. Um, so I'll go mm-hmm. I'll go Uganda, Kenya, Ethiopia uh, mm-hmm. for, the, for the famous uh, podium. Bahrain looming there. As well, well Bahrain, the famous hotbed. You, mm. you cannot count, cannot count them out. Mm-hmm. Uh, U.S. not entered. U.S. does not have a team here. Do you want to do yeah. the game where we say, "Man, if the U.S. ran in this meet, what team would they put out? What would be their best team?" Do you want to play that game? Sure, sure. I love that game. I mean, it never. It's always not those people in the in the, when it comes to the half marathon. <laughs> but uh, sure, sure. Let's do it. It's almost exclusively. I think you'd put. Well, see if you have five. I think Galen Rupp's on the team. I'm gonna go that far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the, bold, the leap. Bold. Okay. I'd like. I'd like Leonard Career in this yeah. situation. Marathon and 10K. He's good. Those would be my first two picks. Who would you go with? Well, I'm always tooting the horn for Paul Chalimo. I, I think Paul Chalima would be a good, good half marathon or run marathon runner. I know he wouldn't wouldn't do this, but you know he ran the New York City half and ran well in his I think lone race, uh, pretty fast in the five thousand. I would try to put him on here. Uh, otherwise, oh, 
who else is is good in the half? 2007 Ryan Hall. Um, <laughs> who else? No, I, I modern people. Uh, I don't know. Maybe Shadrach Kip here. Um, other that's four. Yeah, one more. Um, who else is? I mean, I, when you think of the marathoners, there's nobody that pops out as far as a good half marathon half. runner. We're, we're, I mean, right. it, yeah, that, that pops out as a good half marathon runner. Um, L- Lopez? <laughs> I mean, I just want guys with some speed. I don't know. I don't want marathoners on this team. Yeah, that, that'd be one strategy. I think if I was planning out this team, I think what I would do is you'd pick some stalwarts. Like you'd obviously pick Rub, and then you pick someone like Career. But I think since you're you can start five, but you're only scoring three on time, I think I would I'd take some flyers. That's why I like the mm. Chilimo pick. Yeah, you could even yeah, talk me into guy. you could even talk me into a, like a Hassan Mead situation, and I think that might be interesting. Oh, mm. mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I I I want track guys. That's that's my that's my. Uh, Market and efficiency is pulling the guys that actually mm. have speed. I, I, I've seen the sixty-two minute runs in Houston. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with that. That's not going to win us any, any medals. I'm tired mm. of losing. I'm tired of losing in the world half. I know we lost by default this year, but hey, I, you know, we'll get them next time. So last year, the fastest half marathoner by an American was Career at 101.53, Cabini 101.57, and then it went into the 62s, to your point about 62s. In 2018, Rupp 59.47, Career 60 flat, Chilanga, or 60.12, Chilanga 60.37, and then you get up in the mm-hmm. 61s. And let me just go back one more year here to see if there's anybody who's a blinking red light. Career 59.52. Who career? I don't Scrappy? know. Just some junkyard dogs. <laughs> I want. We need to have this race up, like up the Rocky Mountains. I want to. We need a sixty-five minute race to be able to compete. <laughs> I think that last spot's hard to fill because I think Rupp career are locks. I think Kipchirchir would be a, a smart pick, but then after that, Chalimo on the flyer. But I don't know where you'd go on that last one. I don't know where you go. Because I'm there's nobody a, jumping out. I'd be I'd yeah. be well, I would be inclined to pick not a marathoner, but another 10k runner. Someone like right. Hassan Lopez. 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 Yeah. Or Lopez. Yeah. Just closes in fifty-four. Um okay, women's race. You got the cheat sheet here in front of you that you put together. Give me the give me the top line in the women's race. No Sifan Hassan, which is a bummer. Yeah, she pulled out. Um so we have a bunch of very, very accomplished women. Uh, crucially, a lot of people who have cl- been able to claim in different different ways to be a world record holder. We have the world record holder in all conditions, Ababel Yashane, who ran 64-31 mm. back in February, famously beat Go. Bridget Cosby. A personal favorite of mine, uh, she has really come on, and basically her entire career is – Propped up by that sixty four thirty one, but that's that's not a bad thing to necessarily have. Paris Jeff Cheer another world record holder, except for a women's only race world record holder, which she ran just in September in don't call mm-hmm. it Prague, it's Prague, uh, sixty five thirty four. But she's run faster sixty five oh six. Then mm-hmm. a, another world record holder, a former world record holder, Joycelyn Jeff the twenty nineteen in New York City Marathon champion. In her debut, beat Mary Katani. Not a bad little thing to do. Uh, she's run both 64-51 and 64-52. Uh, those were in 2017. Uh, and she also has experience in this race. She was a silver medalist in 2018. I should also mention with Jeff Cheer Cheer, she's the 2016 world half champion. And then you go down to the defending champion, Netsanet Gudeta. I hope that's how you say that. Like I said, defending champion. Uh, she's got a 65-45 personal best. Um, and then I go to some, if we're mentioning flyers, Lona Salpeter, uh, mm-hmm. came kind of out of nowhere and ran, ran one Tokyo, the Tokyo marathon in 2020, 217, 45. She's run 66, oh, nine. Um, so a lot to choose from there as your favorite. I would, uh, 
if I'm going off the top, I would pick Jeff Cheer Cheer. What do you What do you got? Yeah, I'd probably go Jeff Cheer Cheer because we just saw her a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago run that time, and form counts for a lot. I have no idea what to expect from Yeshina. Is she what you described earlier as a half marathon flash in the pan, or is she going to be the next Bridget Goss guy and going to turn into a two fourteen marathoner? Anybody's mm-hmm. guess. Jip Cos guy was so good in in you know 2017, 2018, 2019. But we have have we seen anything from her this year? Jocelyn Jip Cos guy? Uh, I haven't I know she I raced her she raced a little bit and it was I think it was cross country. It wasn't particularly mm-hmm. inspiring. Um yeah. but you know that was at the, that's January and February pre pandemic, uh at mm-hmm. least on a global 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 scale uh and you know wasn't anything otherworldly i just think back to we obviously know how good she can be not only with a half marathon but beating mary katani in new york city in her debut that uh, shows that she can handle a big stage pretty well yeah this has weird i i would say chip churcher is a favorite but this has weird result written all over it i don't know I, how many I people could, go in I don't know how many people going into the last edition of this race had Gudetta pinned as their favorite. Mm-hmm. So I, I think we could see somebody from Kenya or Ethiopia surprising. That's not even on on your list. Uh, I could name I, some I agree people with that. if you want. Yeah, yeah, we do probably need to to mention some more people. Like on the men's side, the Kenyan team is very very strong let's go ahead and find that roster um you know you do have you have a bunch of 67 minute women on that squad as far as ethiopia is concerned um Mm -hmm. they have nigsty have to i hope i'm saying that right she's run 66 minutes uh zeneba yimmer she's run 65 46 those are other contenders i just worry with yashana Yes, she ran 64.31. That has been a long time ago uh, as far as the fact that that's been in February mm-hmm. and we are now in October. She was fit at, at, you know, for that race. How do you carry that over? When, when you look at the, her career record, she hasn't been this like super duper star previously on the level of maybe a Jep Cheer Cheer or a Jep Koz guy. Um, mm-hmm. Despite the fact that she has this huge outlier PR that that was a men's race. You really have, I mean, you know, a a race where she was running with men. I think you really have to look at these other women and say they could probably run something similar if put in that exact situation. I know they've also run races with men, but I I don't, as I I don't look at her as Yashana's 6431 and think, oh, wow, she's 30 plus seconds better than Chep Cheer Cheer. There's just a big difference between Mm -hmm running exclusively with women and running uh with running with men as well i look at jeff cheer cheer she's got both factors for me the experience of winning this race and then like you said uh she sh- she's shown most recently the fitness back in september i i it does have upset potential it does have a a a uh a 12 seed beating a five seed in the NCAA tournament potential i i can see that some random athlete it, you know and will anoint her if, if some random name wins as the next great half marathoner, we've done that a thousand times, at least on the uh, uh, both on the men's and the women's side. But it's, it seems like particularly on the women's side, um, it does have that ability. But I, I, I think even with these big four names, I, I do think mm-hmm. Jeff Cheer Cheer is is a step above. Team race again. I look at these things to the <laughs> team angle and also the World Athlete of the Year angle. In the case of the men. Uh, Kenya, Ethiopia, Bahrain, in some order. I don't see anybody else getting on the podium. It's going to be hard. I think Kenya and Ethiopia mm-hmm. are much better than, than Bahrain, so it should be between Kenya and Ethiopia for that win. Okay, U.S. team. Dream U.S. team. Who do you got? Again, they're not here. Um, who do I have for my dream? I ha- would have Sarah Hall. She could race a marathon three days before and come back and be competitive in this one, so I would put her on. Uh, Emily Sisson, probably mm-hmm. Molly Huddle. Um, mm-hmm. 
who am I who am I missing here? I, I should probably uh, should probably have my uh, my other athlete. So I've got what three or yeah three. Yeah, three. Yeah, two more. Uh, is that how that works? Um, let's see. Who else has run we put well? Hase? In- Hase would be good, although I'm going to have to call her a flyer because I uh, don't know, know exactly where her fitness is or, you know, or, you know her health. And that's that's crucial above this or, or on this. Uh, who else, though? Why, why am I I'm got- struggling to think of? Well, if yeah, you're looking from the marathon perspective, well, from the marathon perspective, you got the three women who made the Olympic team. Yeah, you I have... just I don't love them. I don't love. Either. Okay, I don't. That's fine. I mean, that's Julie Mock and a half. I don't. Seidel and and then, you know, maybe Sally Kipiego five years ago, but probably not right now. Okay. Uh, you have the uh, NAZ elite women. I mean, Bowerman. You didn't pick anybody from from Bowerman. I guess that oh, would just throw Shelby Hulahan in there. Okay, I'll just put Shelby Hulahan in there. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? I think Huddle has to be on there. I think Sisson has to be on there. I I would put Hase on there right. as well. Sarah Hall right now would be a good pick. Let me look yeah. at these. Let's let's look. Yeah, I, I don't. There's a but but then there's a lot, right? I mean, I don't, like I don't think putting Christian Swizer on there would be crazy. No, I, I agree. I was going to mention that, but then I thought, oh, you know who's even better? Shelby Houlihan. Um, so. Right. I just think of Schweizer more as a longer distance, mostly just because Shelby's so good at the 15, even though that doesn't really. She could also be right. good at the half marathon and good at the 15. That doesn't really, mm-hmm. doesn't really track. Um, here, I'll give you the top. You want me to give you the top five women's half marathoners in the U.S. right now? Or from last year? Yes. Just, just, just yes. based on time. Just based on time. So this is – you take this with a grain of salt. Actually, I could go back a couple of years here to give us a, a, a picture just like we did with the men. Okay, so, well, this year, Sarah Hall won, Huddle 2, Seidel 3. Okay, go back mm-hmm. one year to 2019. Sisson, Huddle, Katie Moen is third with 70-27. 2018 – we got Huddle, Hase, Hall, all under 70 minutes, and then Tuli Muck and Kellen Taylor at okay. 70. So maybe I should put Tuli Muck on there. I mean, 70 minutes is not going to be competitive with anybody in this race, but I don't think we have any Americans who are going to be competitive with anyone in this race, obviously. But well, if you're going for the guess- win, if you're going for the win, I think you got to say, I, I need somebody who can go under 70 for sure. Or if you're going for the medal, right? So Hase, yeah. this yeah. is 26. 20- 17 now, Hase, Huddle, Sisson, Craig, Hall, Tulimuk were the six women who went under 71 minutes. I think for sure this exercise is borne out that Sarah Hall should be there, Sisson, yes. Huddle, and then Hase is healthy. And then that last spot, yeah, that last spot's open. Might have a might have to have a like a like a race off, a time trial. There you go. In a half marathon, in practice, or a hundred meter, a hundred meter race for the for a. Uh... For the half marathon team, that's how I would do it. Just to play some mind games. I, okay. I charge a track. We got we got a couple emails I wanted to read. Uh, they're not that mean to you this time, so good. You can be. You can oh keep God. your eyes open. Before we do well, that, people though, have started coming for me on Twitter too. I see they're complimenting you. You're the only person with good takes on online mm-hmm. or on 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 the podcast. Yeah, it's not I'm wrong. sorry that okay. occasionally I go for the green and two. Kevin's laying up every single time, but okay, I guess I'll pay the price. I, I don't know. I felt like you were going with the conventional internet angst wisdom. It was me that was going against the grain when I said okay. we should not say Joshua Chepta guy is the byproduct of lights and carbon. I, I I'm not on the carbon. I, I the carbon. I'm fine with it, and I I I just think the. Uh, no, you know my completely logical take. It's less than a bet. Gaudet, yeah, I, who's a product of those things, not <laughs> Chep the guy. Totally separate things. Right, right. Okay, before I do that, though, I wanted to mention something to you that Gordon and I talked about yesterday that you probably missed. But you could say that this week is the greatest week in the history of Missouri distance running because they were aff- awarded the 2025 NCAA cross-country championships. How are you feeling about that? 
I did see. Yeah, uh, I'm not familiar with the University of Missouri cross country course. We never competed there growing up. It's not like where the state championships are or anything like that. Um, so I'll be interested to see what what that entails. Will they dedicate a Carissa Swiger statue at the 2025 NCAA Cross Country Championships? They probably should. Will she shoot the gun? Uh, I mean, it's just a lot. Yeah, 2025. Re repeat, uh, repeat everything you're saying, but without grabbing your mic so that we can't hear you. We got to start oh. this again. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said because I want you to. I said I want you to speak directly to to, to your fellow Missourians out Missourians. there. I think it's Gans 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 Creek. In Columbia? Is oh, that okay. Yeah, I've never heard of that. Course? Like I said, like what I was saying, uh, I've never run on this course. I don't know the course. It's not like a famous Missouri track or anything like that. Uh, you know, the state championships are not run in in Columbia. So I, I don't know what the course is. Um, we, we shall see. I'll find out, I guess, in 2025 if I'm still, you know, following the cross-country world. Uh, I My joke, but also serious, is they should dedicate a Carissa Swiger statue at this meet i think mm. that'd be that'd be excellent um yeah it's exciting times to look forward to uh people seem to be getting irrationally excited about events i mean it is <laughs> in a serious note it is good to see like oh we're not just doing Terre Haute and other location and indoors it's not just texas a&m and arkansas uh outdoors of course it's eugene Eugene, 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 one one more Austin, Texas before 94 straight years in Eugene. I guess that's what mm -hmm. happens when Phil Knight pays a bajillion dollars for a stadium. But it is nice to, to see them mixing it up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's a very exciting in the in the Missouri sports world that we are going to have a NCAA cross country championships. Can't wait. I sent you a link. I sent you a link to a Google image of the Gans Creek cross country course. I want you to open that okay. link. It's it's pretty unique when it comes to collegiate college courses. Just open that bad boy up right now. Tell me what you think. Wow, yeah, definitely unique. Uh, we've got the old uh, the the uh, the cow fence and the grass. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. <laughs> Do you like Columbia? Would people be pleased spending a couple of days in Columbia? Yeah, Columbia's Columbia's fine. It's a is a. I mean, you may have heard this before. It's a college town. That is for sure. Mm. Uh, what? So all these Google photos are from like they've just been uploaded recently, October twenty twenty. So uh, it's new, apparently. Clearly, the course is new. Okay, it's new. Okay, cool. That's why I never ran on it or had heard of it. That that makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, yeah, it kind of has like a Madison type of a vibe. Uh, it's a pasture that's been mowed down. That's good that they're mowing it. Um, maybe some slight undulations. But yeah, Col Columbia is a good place to spend a weekend in uh, in November. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can attend. I am I would be excited to go back to, to Columbia. Yeah, it looks nice. I just wish everything in collegiate cross country didn't look the exact same. That's my only... <laughs> Yeah, just Mount dye. Liberal. What is it too much to ask for them to dye the grass like Mizzou colors? Like, uh, that's is that too much? Yeah. Also, people should know that you don't call it the University of Missouri; it's Mizzou. So, people, I don't want them to make mm. that mistake. Be like, it's it's in it's at Missouri. No, it's Mizzou. So, just get that out. Okay, what do you call your alma mater? Drury. Okay, <laughs> just want to get that out there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay email email got it mm -hmm. question for lincoln that's the subject line from joe oh, god lincoln how, claims how dare you that world <laughs> claims that world record holders should be quote accomplished end quote i suppose meaning have olympic or world championship medals before breaking them leroy burrell twice set the world record in the hundred and only has one silver world championship medal his other three uh, our gold in the four by one. My question is, what say you, Lincoln? Well, Leroy, we've had this discussion, me and me and him. He knows he's a fraud, and that's okay. There needs no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's a very big man. I would not uh, call that man, call him a fraud. Uh, I under, I knew that there would be some some internet warriors out there who are going to be able to look back at some other world record holders. However, no, no, no. is Leroy, is Leroy Burrell? Research? 
Is Leroy Burrell still a world record holder? No. It's not like that record stood for generations and generations. Just like I think we're going to find out with G'day's record. I, I, it, it's not going to, it shouldn't last as long as Dababa's did. I prefer my world record holders, prefer them. If I had a, if I had a meeting with all my world record holders, I would show preferential treatment to those <laughs> who have gold medals and have done a lot on the championship championship stage. So Leroy maybe would not Here, be first in line for the, the buffet. I, I, you know, it's just that I'd probably put thing. Usain Bolt up there. Here's the thing, folks. Lincoln comes to conclusions sometimes before he's actually looked at evidence, which in sometimes sometimes <laughs> it pays off because he's the first one there. But other times he arrives to a place he doesn't want to be at and he just gets pilloried with contradictory evidence for a day, a week, or a month. Or in the case of the 2019 NCAA indoor press conference, he gets – <laughs> rebuked by Florida coach Mike Holloway to do his research, yeah. which That's you were tough. you were you had a point in that one, but here mm -hmm. if I could if this was a morning <laughs> FM radio show, I would just play the drop of Mike Holloway telling you to go do your research. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was going to do a Mike or the Mad Dog impression there, but I decided it would be ugly. So uh, <laughs> Mike, Mike, listen, listen. <laughs> I think he's going to get tripped up there. Uh, <laughs> and now, but now you're, you're committed. You are committed. Sorry, man. Yeah, I got to commit to that. Take. I got to commit to the uh, take that's going to be really famous when G'day like explodes next year and runs 1350 and like sweeps the five and the 10K. It's going to be awesome when that happens. But see, here's the, here's the thing is in a way you're wrong either way. Because if she goes on to be something otherworldly, then you can say, wow, that was an otherworldly performance. We should not have attributed it to these external factors. If she yeah. doesn't and three other people break it next year, you could say, well, those people were just like better and she got the opportunity to, to, to do it. Right? Yeah. Like if, if Safan Hassan runs 13.59 and she happens to do it in a race where there's no lights – you can say, well, today's just a tier below Safan Hassan. That record just might not have been that good. Couldn't you yeah. look at it that way? I could. If I was if I was a defendant in court, I would not take the stand <laughs> because I do not want to be subject to cross examination when it comes to this take. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take the fifth on this one, Kevin. Let's move on to the next email. I'm just looking at pictures of Gans Creek now. Okay. Last email. Here we go. From Sarah. Question for Lincoln. No, just kidding. <laughs> she says, hi, Flow Track. Just finished listening to the most recent episode, and while I totally agree with Lincoln and Gordon's point that Safan Hassan can break the 10K world record. Okay, this was the episode a couple days ago when you were yeah. ranking the likelihood of world records, of which you inflated by at least 20 to 30% with each mark. I, I enjoyed it, but it was <laughs> way outside <laughs> It was it was like a country's currency where you need like six billion dollars to buy a a bottle of water. Um, I I think she says Latensibet Gade maybe has an even better chance at the ten thousand, even though her track PB is thirty twenty one from the World Championships in Doha. She ran forty four twenty road fifteen k, a world best. It doesn't mean anything I know in November of last year, but her splits were insane there. She ran the first 5K in 1509 and closed the last yeah. 10K in 29.11. Yes, 29.11. She clearly has enormous potential in the longer distances as well as on the roads. I have no clue how the course conditions pacing were in that 15K, but that time is mighty impressive. With that time in mind and a stellar performance in the 5K and the track this year, she's clearly got to be in the conversation for the 10K world record and also the gold in Tokyo. Keep up the good work. That is Sarah. Now, Sarah's she's she's going uphill a little bit with you here because she's both trying to prove that your take is wrong and using G'day <laughs> to disprove it. Uh, it's the perfect storm out for on, Lincoln. Somebody pointed out that uh, G'day's 15K is uh, the highest ranked distance record on the on the old scoring table. So I'm just getting completely dunked on all week. Were there with, lights there? Were yeah. There lights? Christmas lights, yeah. Uh, 
Sure. So she great. has a, a shot too. I just think, you know, in a race where Hassan's going to be, Hassan's better and dominated in, in Doha and Saf- Safan Hassan just ran 2936 in a monsoon. She's going to run like 28 low, I think, or t- excuse me, 28 high <laughs> in, in Tokyo. <laughs> It's just a 99%, <laughs> 99%. chance. Uh, yeah, yeah, the 15K. I mean, you know, you can't – you know, It's listen, tough when I agree with Gordon more than you. That's all I'm saying. It's a tough episode okay. for Lincoln when I find myself the, nodding my head at Gordon and going, yes, whenever he's talking. <laughs> the the uh, the splits, the 10K split from the 15K is a road race. You know, we know Ronix Kiprutu ran 26-24. The, the downhill nature, of course, is going to inflate that relative to what you can do on the track. Good day is a better runner than I give her credit for. I apologize to her family and all of Ethiopia. <laughs> However, Savannah Khan's better. I, if, I'm if i comfortable being behind that take, and I'm not going to look too, too much into what Gade did on the roads. Now, if Letesma Gade was going to be in this World Half Championships, ooh, yeah, that'd be a great proving proving moment for her. She's not. She's uh, she's avoiding competition. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, Safan's better. Safan Hassan's better. She's just better. And, okay. Okay. That's yes, that's shot, fine. But only if Safan Hassan's injured. Yeah, but what Sarah is saying, she's a better chance to break the world record. Let's just do this experiment. If Safan Hassan couldn't compete next year, she was injured. Would mm-hmm. what would be the odds of Gade breaking the 10k world record? Would you have them at 98 or 97? <laughs> Uh, no, I'd have it at 20% because I just, I, I don't know. I don't, she got to prove she can do it without the lights. <laughs> but Hassan no. is still, what did you have Hassan at? Like 75% or something like that? So, <laughs> something like that, yeah. You had everybody break your world record. It was... <laughs> <laughs> no, I no Gade. I mean, yeah, like 20, 20 something percent. I don't. I mean, twenty nine seventeen is still a good record. I, Gade is very, very good, but uh, I, I just have more faith in in Safan Hassan. If Hassan is not there, maybe, maybe Gade goes out hard and tries to break this record. Um, yeah, but because she's a grinder, as Paul Shlimo said, and doesn't have the kick, so maybe she she goes for it. But yeah, get her know. to Valencia again. Get her to Valencia again. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Let's see. What, yeah. Uh, um, it was <laughs> funny though when you guys were going. We get when you guys are going through those, and then you got to Michael Norman. It's like, huh, twenty-two-year-old guy who ran forty-three forty-five in April of a championship year, only you know, less than three tenths off the world record. Lincoln's like, I'll give him a four percent chance, Gordon. Give him a four <laughs> percent. <chance." laughs> no, that one was twenty. That one was twenty. I know. I know that just seemed out of whack with the other ones. It's all well. There, it's 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 a hard. It's it's a hard thing to forecast and guess. I just think you were. Some of those are going to be borne out to be true. You're going to get some of those right that you had above above fifty percent, just because of the law of averages. But I did agree with you on Warholm. I, I or someone in the men's foreign hurdles. Gordon somehow thinks that. Warholm's, despite the fact that he's very young and raced against nobody all year in low stakes meets, that he's never going to improve on his time, which I think is an interesting, interesting perspective to have. Yeah, it's weird. It was a tough ask for him to comment as an expert on anything other than NAU cross country. I know he's very <laughs> specialized, so it was a tough one. But we had a, we had to have a topic, and so uh, yeah, my percentages were were a little uh, ambitious. I, I admit it, but I also came up with those ten minutes before the podcast. So I wanted to be. I didn't want to be yeah. too. I you know, I wanted to give some people show some people some faith. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was it was entertaining. I'll say that. And it, yeah, it, you yeah. know, if you if you were just down the again, you were trying to go for the green and probably won in that situation. <laughs> And I, I enjoyed it. I got my 500 yard club. Mm-hmm. All right. We'll leave it there. Flowtrack podcast at gmail.com. Stay tuned to the site. Gordon is going to be on location in Stillwater. He gets there late tonight and he'll be there for the meet tomorrow. It's going to be great. I talked to him yesterday. He's very excited to go. He picked up the camera cord from my house that I've had since that March 13th weekend when everything shut down. Um, we, we strategized, we talked, we went into the war room with our masks on and plotted out the coverage. <laughs> it's going to be good stuff. Uh, anybody out there who has info on the 
Gans Creek Cross Country Course, make sure to email us or tag Lincoln on Flow Track so he can start mm-hmm. the countdown to Missouri becoming the new cross cross country town USA. The new cross country town USA, perhaps. D- I don't know. Yeah, Terre Haute Town. It's, it's, it's Gans Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Alon for producing. Thanks to Latensa Bet Gaday's number one fan, Lincoln Strike, for co-hosting. We'll talk to you guys next week.